Hi guys. So in the last couple of weeks I've actually been reading a decent amount. So I have another wrap-up. This one is another standalones wrap-up. I have eight books to share with you today, so let's get into it. The first one that I finished I actually mentioned in my book haul that I just posted, and that is Beauty and the Beast by Gabrielle Suzanne Barbeau de Villeneuve. Um, this is a translation of the original, The Beauty and the Beast, and I, it was okay. I enjoyed it enough. Um, it was just like really long-winded, I feel. Like there was so much explanation about why things happened the way they happened and how they worked out and how all of this stuff came to play and I thought the explanations were a little too much. Other than that, I enjoyed, you know, finding out the original story. It was nice and I would definitely recommend checking this out if you really enjoy Beauty and the Beast. After that, in the course of five hours, I read Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This is about a man, Charlie, who was born with an unusually low IQ. He has been chosen to participate in a study where they see if they can, you know, boost his IQ. The only thing that has gone through this experiment thus far is a mouse called Algernon. So, yeah. It goes through in like his progress reports, his little diary entries is how the story is told. And it goes through maybe a year, a little over a year I feel like. And it was interesting. I was told that it would be heartbreaking and stuff like that. I didn't really find it all that sad. I mean I found it kind of sad. But it didn't really get me the way that I feel like it gets a lot of people. Um, I feel like it could have been longer. It could have been like, I don't know. I feel like there were a couple of things that they could have changed about this that would have made it a little more impactful, at least for me. Um, but overall, I still enjoyed it and I'm so glad that I read it. After that, I finished Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne. This is a story about basically three women it starts in 1945 and it ends in 1965 and it goes through the three of their lives through those two decades um, with you know their love, their jobs, their personal lives, their relationships with each other. Um, it's a really like gritty. I don't want to use the word dirty because like I guess this was called a dirty book at some point and Suzanne Jacqueline was like, I mean, if you're calling it dirty because of this, then yeah, it's, it's, it's really, I think it's a, it's like a gritty, real story, and it just gives you, like, this harsh part of all of this stuff, and it was just fascinating. It was really, really interesting to read and I'm really glad that I finally read it. I do plan on watching the movie at some point in the future. I just have to find it first. So a certain event in that book made me want to pick up this one, which is Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. This is the second time that I have read this book. It's the book that the movie is based on, and it's one of my favorite movies. Um, but this is Susanna Kaysen's account of when she was institutionalized for about a year, I think. And it was just interesting. I haven't, I don't know when I read this, but I know I have read it a while ago. And just seeing how the story is told in the book as opposed to the movie is really interesting. And everything that happens and the way people act and just, this entire book is just interesting. I watched the movie after I read the book and I filmed a little discussion on my opinions on the two of them interconnected, um, but I haven't edited or posted that yet. If you're interested, let me know and I will definitely get to work on that a little faster. I like reading this story. Then I finally picked up The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. This is the story of a couple who work and live at a lighthouse and a baby washes up in a boat one day and this goes through what they decide to do with the baby and how this affects not only them but certain people back on land and 
I was told it was supposed to be kind of heartbreaking and I feel like when I'm told something's supposed to be heartbreaking it just isn't as heartbreaking as they say it's gonna be um like I'm prepared for it more so but there were two spots I want to say in this book that definitely got me close to tears so there is a lot of this book that is very emotional and very I want to kind of relatable but not really like oh I've been through that relatable it's oh that could happen to me relatable and I don't know if I'll ever watch the movie but I'm glad that I finally picked this up because I was half ready to get rid of it because I didn't think I'd ever read it but I'm really glad that I picked it up. It was really enjoyable. I started this a while ago, but I finally finished The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is my second read through of this. I went crazy tabbing it again, um, like I've been doing with The Lord of the Rings and like I am currently doing with The Hobbit. This is kind of like the history of Middle Earth with the Valinor, um, the Maiar, where Gandalf and Galadriel come from, where the Dúnedain, the Numenorians, we get Alrond's history, the story of Baron and Luthien we get a little bit in here, um, and that one's actually being published into a full-length novel this month, which I'm so excited about. Um, this just kind of got me really reading this, got me really excited to read that, to read The Lays of Balorand, to read just the entire histories of Middle Earth. This really got me excited to read a bunch of that stuff. So I'm really glad that I finally picked this up again and I will definitely probably reread it next year because I'm currently listening to a podcast by the Tolkien professor um, and right now I'm listening to his stuff mainly on The Hobbit because I'm currently reading The Hobbit but he did a Washington College course on Tolkien and in a couple of things he discusses the Silmarillion so I plan on reading along while listening to those podcasts so this definitely got me excited and raring to like tear into some Tolkien stuff and then I finished Did You Ever Have a Family by Bill Clegg this was nominated for the Man Booker I want to say back in 2015 and this is about a woman who is standing outside of her house when it burns down with her boyfriend, her daughter, and her daughter's fiance, and her ex-husband in the house. Everyone dies. And this kind of just follows her and it follows a bunch of other people who are affected by her. And we just kind of see how this one event can affect so many people and you know people who aren't even directly related to the event and how all of these other events can lead up to what happened and it was just really really interesting um it took me a while to get into it and get all the names straight but after I did that I enjoyed it and yeah, I would I would recommend it and then the last book that I just finished I think I read it in the course of an hour like two days ago um, and that is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is another poetry collection. I will liken it to Milk and Honey by Ruby Carr because when you look at it, that's what it makes you think of. Um, and the poetry style is very similar. It's that kind of line jump poetry, very straightforward, no like flowery writing or anything. And it was okay. Overall, it wasn't like super great or relatable for me. Um, in Ruby Cars, she deals with abuse of the sexual nature, and in this one, it deals with abuse of like child abuse um, from like her mother. And the only ones that really got me were like I folded down a bunch of pages back here, and they were all happy ones about falling in love again after being broken. Um, and those were the ones that really got me because at this point in my life when I read Milk and Honey I was kind of still getting over a breakup um, so a lot of that healing stuff was really good for me because it was just kind of like yeah I am worth it this one had a little bit of that in there um, but it also had a lot of the I'm in a relationship this is new but this is good and this is helping me 
kind of thing, which is where I am right now. I'm, you know, celebrating four months today, <laughs> which is so small, but so big and so exciting. And like some of these poems towards the back were just like writing to that guy saying, you know, you did this for me and I appreciate that. And you helped me in these ways. And it was, it was nice for that aspect. But those were the only poems that I really got anything out of. It was okay, and I didn't love it as much as I was hoping to. So, yeah. Those are all of the standalones that I have finished since the last time I did a standalones wrap-up. Right now, I have currently one other book that I have finished, but that's part of a duology series or something. Um, so I'll talk about that when I have more of those let me know about the books that you've read recently. If there's any that you would suggest, maybe I've read some of them too. We can have discussions about those in the comments. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can check out my next video. Have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye.